What would you say is the biggest myth that people have about going out in the sun? That the sun is toxic. That is absolute, utter nonsense. You know, the, the whole paradigm of avoiding sun uh, that I personally practiced and that I hear dermatologists, ophthalmologists say all the time is, you know, sun is bad, avoid the sun. The idea that the sun is this big problem in people's health is really a, a I think, dangerous oversimplification of the complexity of our relationship with light. At the end of the day, there's an enormous amount of literature on the health benefits of sunlight. We know that limiting your sun exposure increases your rates of certain diseases. The risk of dying of skin cancer is minuscule compared to the risk of dying of many other causes of disease. All of those are linked to low sun exposure and low vitamin D levels and low melatonin levels. If you go through the top 10 causes of death for Americans in every year, they're all linked to low vitamin D. If you look at the number of people who die from skin cancer, it's something like 10,000 people per year. It, it, it varies, you know, melanoma versus basal cell versus squamous cell. But at the end of the day, the vast, vast, vast majority of patients, people in the United States and in any country in the developed world who die every single year are dying from diseases that are linked to a lack of sun exposure and not over sun exposure. You know, just looking at evolutionary history is that man evolved outside and you know, mankind ideally should you know, be outside 90% of the time and probably only inside to sleep where the modern human since the light bulbs were invented in the late 1800s kind of flipped that around and is living inside 80, 90% of the time and rarely going outside. You know, if the sun was bad for you, we wouldn't be here. I mean, just think about it. A hundred years ago, we spent 95% of our time in natural light. The only forms of artificial light were firelight and candlelight and they were relatively expensive. And so now we have artificial light and we can sort of do whatever we want. And this means that the average person is getting, you know, maybe 5% of the ultraviolet light that their ancestors were. And yet, paradoxically, skin cancer rates are rising and continue to rise. In fact, melanoma rates are doubling every couple of decades. So how does it make sense that the sun causes skin cancer when skin cancer rates are rising and we've never spent more time indoors than we do now? Why is it that people who have the lowest vitamin D levels have the most skin cancer and the most melanoma? I mean, let's face it, if you have a low vitamin D level, it means you're not in the sun, right? But yet, those are the people that tend to get the cancers. That should stop you dead in your tracks and go, why am I putting the sunscreen on? What's the link to the sunscreen? Then you find out that sunscreen's a $6 billion industry in North America. And then you go, oh, so without sunscreen, you might not need to go to the dermatologist. How's that for irony? A lot of my thinking on the health benefits of sunlight come back to a study called the Melanoma in Southern Sweden study, which was a study in which they wanted to quantify how important are different lifestyle factors in uh, creating or causing melanoma and also all cause mortality. So the Melanoma in Southern Sweden trial looked at a lot of different dietary and lifestyle uh, factors that, and then analyzed them for how they impacted someone's risk of developing melanoma, which is the most lethal variety of skin cancer. And one of the most profound and frankly uh, shocking revelations of this study is that they found that women or people who smoked but spent a lot of time outside had a similar risk of all cause mortality, in other words, dying as people who spent a lot of time indoors but didn't smoke. And so the implication of this would be that getting sun exposure, particularly in a high latitude like Sweden, is really critical to avoiding death. And that this benefit is so great that it is equivalent to smoking cigarettes. Well, sun avoidance increases all cause mortality on the order of at least modern cigarette smoking. In my opinion, it's far worse than that because number one, it's more pervasive, meaning that it affects far more people than people who smoke. And number two, the effects of it are, they're different for each individual. Like for smoking, obviously you have gastric cancer and lung cancer and COPD. Avoiding the sun increases all cause mortality 
from everything from cancer, neurodegenerative disease, type 2 diabetes, uh, autoimmune disease. I mean, it's unbelievable that the linkages between sun avoidance and these chronic diseases. So what I want people to understand is that natural sun exposure is vital to good health because without it, people do not do well. You need to get adequate sun exposure for your vitamin D level. Having a tan is not a bad thing in and of itself. There's a lot of benefits to alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone, which is what's triggered by the incident UV light on the skin, particularly UVA. And so the key is really not to burn because that's the only thing that's consistently linked to the development of skin cancer and particularly to premature mortality from sun exposure. And then when people get in trouble is they spend all their time inside, they run outside at high noon with unprotected skin that has never seen the sun in the morning time and they're much more likely to injure their skin at that point. Because really what a sunburn is, it's a sign that your body is not adequately adapted to the amount of energy that you're exposing it to. This is not any different from walking into, say, a gym, loading up a barbell with an enormous amount of weight, and you try and squat 400 pounds when really you should only be dealing with 100, and you blow out a you know, vertebra on your back or a disc in your back, trying to deadlift it. You know, If somebody goes into a gym and does some weight training, that's good for them. If somebody goes out and gets a little bit of sun exposure but doesn't burn, that's the same thing. And so what I tell people is you need to get prudent sun exposure, which means never burning, and eating a balanced, healthy diet that's gonna make sure that you have all the compounds you need in order to not burn when you're out in the sun. And so the paradigm that tells us to avoid ultraviolet light on our eyes and our skin is absolutely wrong. And the primary source of ultraviolet light is the sun. And so I had been telling patients for 15 years, avoid ultraviolet light on your eyes. That leads to eye disease. That is an absolute false paradigm, okay? And, it, and it, it, in my opinion, it could revolutionize not only ocular health, but systemic health. And, and, I, and I argue with my colleagues about this all the time because they are so caught up in the paradigm, which quite frankly is 20 years old, of avoid sunlight. And we're causing our people, our patients, and ourselves to become sick. Fixating on a given endpoint, like did you get melanoma, really misses the point. The real point is, how do we live the longest, best life possible? And at the end of the day, one of the things about skin cancer is if everybody lives to 95, guess what? They all get skin cancer. If everybody dies at 60, very few of them get skin cancer. But if we have a society where everyone is dying at 60 and we have no skin cancer, that's not better than a society where everybody lives to 95 and all of them have skin cancer. And so if you, if you avoid the sun, you're asking for a chronic disease. And, and in my opinion, that that is inarguable. The science is there. And to continue to tell people to avoid sensible, proper sun exposure, appropriate for skin type, latitude, and other factors, and UV tolerance is absolutely, in my opinion, devastating to our population health. So any physician watching this who doesn't believe that the sun is helpful for health, you need to hold that concept in your mind, go examine it, go look at all the papers that are out there. You might be shocked at what you find.